When you think about the most desirable credit cards that are out there on the market, what typically comes to mind? Well, chances are you might be thinking about a premium high-end credit card like the American Express Platinum, Capital One Venture X, Chase Sapphire Reserve, or even a card like the Delta Reserve or Hilton Inspire. But before you move forward, there are five major problems with all of these premium credit cards that might make you reconsider ever wanting to get one of these premium credit cards. And if you already have one, it might make you wanna cancel. So as always, we're just gonna hop right into the video. But before I do that, if you do enjoy videos just like this one, then do me a huge favor and hit that like button and subscribe down below because a free and easy way to help support my channel and I would really appreciate it. The first major problem with premium credit cards is that they can cause overspending and lifestyle inflation. There are a couple different big factors that can cause this, so I'm gonna break that down right now. The first major factor that can cause overspending and lifestyle inflation are going to be the high annual fees. And by the way, for most of this video, when I refer to premium credit cards, the cards specifically that I'm referring to are the Amex Platinum, Chase Sapphire Reserve, Capital One Venture X, Hilton Aspire and Delta Reserve. And the reason that I'm classifying premium credit cards across these specific cards is because I do cover all of my bases. So a premium credit card for each credit card issuer that is pretty major, and then also a premium credit card that is for hotel or airline specific cards. So if we take a look at the annual fees for these cards from low to high, the Capital One Venture X is a $395 annual fee. The Chase Sapphire Reserve and Hilton Aspire are tied at $550. The Delta Reserve is at $650, and then the Amex Platinum has a $695 annual fee. It can be a pretty major sticker shock to see those annual fees posted to your credit card statement every single year and realize that you're paying this amount of money every year to hold those cards. And this can also be a slippery slope in terms of lifestyle inflation as well, because you should never pay that high of an annual fee unless you can absolutely justify that higher annual fee with the amount of value that you're getting out of the card and you've mathematically done the equation to show that you're getting more value specifically than the annual fee that you're paying for that specific card. And so the reason that I think premium credit cards can cause overspending and lifestyle inflation is I would make the argument that a lot of people are not consistently getting the amount of value out of those premium cards that they need to, to justify the annual fees. And honestly, if you're getting a premium credit card just to get it because maybe it's flashy and it's cool to do so, then who knows in terms of what slippery slope this will lead you down in terms of your next thing, maybe getting a super nice car and getting a huge car loan to go with it. The second big factor to consider here is that not only are the annual fees high, but to actually justify those cards in terms of the value that you're getting, you need to maximize credits, which sometimes can force you to overspend. I will admit this is especially an American Express problem, so it's very applicable to cards like the Amex Platinum, the Hilton Aspire, or Delta Reserve. You don't wanna fall into that first trap of not getting enough value out of your premium credit cards to justify the annual fee. So sometimes the resolution is to overspend on credits to justify those cards and show yourself that you're getting value out of them, even if you're maybe not really. If we take a look at the credits on the Amex Platinum card, I would definitely not organically spend money at Saks Fifth Avenue. And depending on the person, the Uber credit, airline fee credit, hotel credit, or even digital entertainment credit could be stretches for some people, just depending on your own situation, which can cause that overspending to actually take place. The same type of problem exists on the Delta Reserve and Hilton Aspire. So on the Delta Reserve, there's split up monthly credits for things like Resi and Rideshare. And then credits are split into quarterly increments on the Hilton Aspire flight credit and into semi-annual credits on the Hilton Resort credit. The fact that a lot of these credits are split up into different increments can also force that overspending because the fact of the matter is maybe some of those credits would actually be utilized throughout the year but the fact that you're forced to spend on them every month or every quarter or semi-annually even can force you to overspend when maybe it didn't make sense with your organic spending. The second major problem with premium credit cards is going to be card identity changes. What I mean by credit card identity changes is that there have been consistent updates to credit cards that you once applied for, which is maybe making those cards almost undiscoverable at this point because the core details have changed so much in terms of the annual fee increasing and different benefits and credits that are added. I understand that this is just a given of the credit card world and this happens everywhere in terms of inflation and changes that are going on, but I would argue that this happens a lot more to premium credit cards than to a lot of other credit cards that are out there. Take the American Express Platinum as an example, because in 2017, the annual fee went up from $450 to $550, and then it went up again in 2021 from 550 to 695, and now there's rumors of another annual fee increase potentially happening this year. 
And who knows, maybe you'll see an $800 plus card. To make up for those annual fee increases, there have been a bunch of different benefits and credits that have been added to the card, with some of them being pretty seemingly random credits that have been added, and a lot of them are split up into different increments as well, which if we go back to our first problem with premium credit cards, sometimes when those credits are broken up into increments, they can promote overspending, which is a problem because we're getting value that actually isn't organic based on what we would have spent money on in the first place. So imagine this scenario with the Amex Platinum to where maybe you got the card back in 2017 when the annual fee was $450. And now in current day, we're talking about the possibility that the card could maybe go up to having an annual fee of $800. So it basically almost doubled in terms of the fee just alone. And now you have all these random benefits and credits that you have to maximize to get value from the card. And in that sense, I would say that the card is almost unrecognizable now in comparison to how it was in 2017. So those card identity changes can cause you to apply for a card and then down the road, that card is not at all what you once applied for. And the Amex Platinum is not alone. There have been major changes to other premium credit cards as well, especially a lot of those Amex cards. So like the Delta Reserve and Hilton Aspire with different benefits and credits added and annual fees increase as well. And so you might be thinking this isn't really a premium credit card problem, but instead it's just an American Express problem and you could definitely make an argument for that. But also even some other cards, so like the Capital One Venture Rex has gotten nerfed a couple times recently. So there was the removal of Hertz President Circle status. You can't earn points on the $300 annual travel credit. And there's maybe some more lounge restrictions that are coming to prevent the ability to go to Capital One lounges. Okay, but before I move on, let me introduce you to Kudos. Stop using tools like Rakuten, Capital One Shopping, and Credit Karma, and instead just use Kudos. Kudos is a free AI-powered browser extension that allows you to earn more credit card rewards and benefits when you shop online. Kudos is like Honey, NerdWallet, and Apple Pay all in one. Kudos is like Honey, but better. Kudos will help you pick the best card to use at over 3 million stores, to guarantee that you'll always earn the highest rewards, points, or cash back. Kudos is like Nerd Wallet, but easier to use. With Kudos' exclusive partnership with the Points Guy, you can discover new credit cards and get access to the best welcome bonuses available. And finally, Kudos is like Apple Pay. With Kudos, you never have to fill out your credit card info ever again. Just like the credit card that you want to use and Kudos will autofill your card info with just one click. And the best part is Kudos is completely free. So if you're ready to start earning more credit card rewards, points, and cash back, then click the link below and sign up with the code MATT to get $20 back after your first eligible purchase. Get more out of your credit cards with Kudos. The third major problem with premium credit cards is that you can't spend any money on them. When you're constructing your credit card setup, one of the major goals that you should have is to take a look at your own spending preferences and then fill in the missing puzzle pieces in terms of credit cards that have high point multipliers according to those spending preferences. So common sense would say that the higher the annual fee that you're paying on a credit card, the better those point multipliers should be in terms of covering those spending categories that you care about the most. But in reality, a lot of times it's the opposite. For the most part, you pay a premium in terms of a high annual fee for the benefits on that card and sometimes the credits as well. However, premium credit cards are typically lacking in terms of the point multipliers being a lot lower and them not being a very good choice to spend your money on to rack up credit card points. Premium credit cards can give you high multipliers for specific types of travel, so like booking flights through their travel portal, for example. But throughout your daily life, common point multipliers are typically going to be for categories like grocery stores, gas stations, or dining. Premium credit cards typically don't cover those main spending categories very well. And in fact, on a premium card like the Amex Platinum, you should pretty much never spend money on it outside of for flights. This extends to other premium credit cards as well, to where you shouldn't spend money on them for common daily spend categories like grocery stores and gas stations. So like the Sapphire Reserve and Venture Rex can be good for some specific travel related spending categories. And like a card like the Hilton Aspire would be good for Hilton purchases specifically, but again, they wouldn't cover those daily categories as well. So if you're someone who thinks your premium credit card can be used for everything, well, you're probably wrong and you really need to take a look at those specific point multipliers so you can adjust your spending to fit in with which multipliers will give you the highest return and make sure that you're spending accordingly. The fourth major problem with premium credit cards is that it's hard to maximize or even be aware of every major benefit. Most premium credit cards are not simple and instead require a very hands-on approach to ensure that you're getting positive value. Again, since you don't get that much value from these spending, so the point multipliers, 
the value on premium credit cards is going to be found on the different benefits and credits that you need to make sure that you're maximizing. And there are so many different benefits and credits on premium credit cards that sometimes it can just be really hard to keep track of and make sure that you're utilizing every benefit to its full capacity. To go through some examples, we'll start with the Capital Adventure Rex. So pretty much everyone knows about the $300 travel credit and lounge access, especially if you actually have that card. But who all knows about the $100 experience credit at the Hotel Premier Collection or Capital One's Trip Scanner tool? And then on the Chase Sapphire Reserve, it's the same thing. People know about the $300 annual travel credit, but what about the partnership benefits with Lyft, DoorDash, or other nitty gritty details on the travel protections? I would expect that most people with the Amex Platinum know about the credits and the Elite Airport Lounge access, but do most Amex Platinum users even know about the Elite statuses that you get with Hilton and Marriott? And are they actually putting those to use? Well, even if let's say you're aware of all of your benefits, it can be difficult to actually maximize them. Especially on American Express branded premium credit cards, a lot of those cards have turned into coupon books. Some credits can be easy to maximize, but also there's some that are pretty difficult to maximize, especially those ones that are split up into different increments. So if they're on like a monthly or quarterly increment schedule, then sometimes life just happens and you can't get to using those credits every month or every quarter. And then like my first big negative with premium credit cards, some credits are just not that good or are very difficult to organically maximize and sometimes they force overspending. And then if we take a look at credits across American Express credit cards, especially like the Saks Fifth Avenue credit on the Platinum or the Uber credit, and then the Rideshare credit or Resi credits on the Delta Reserve, well, sometimes those credits are really tough to organically maximize and like my first big negative with premium credit cards, it can cause you to overspend. Finally, the last big problem with premium credit cards is there is too much crossover. What I mean by this is that very similar benefits exist across a lot of different premium credit cards. Most broad premium credit cards give you some level of airport and lounge access, and most of the time you don't need all the different lounge access options, but instead you just need what lounge access makes sense based on where you travel to, and what options exist at your home airport and what preferences look like overall for you. And that brings up the question, do you really need more than one premium credit card? I'm definitely on board with getting one premium card that matches with your travel preferences and makes a lot of sense for you, but how many more do you actually need? If you travel domestically pretty frequently, then you probably just need the Chase Sapphire Reserve. If you travel a lot in general, you travel to airports with Centurion lounges, and you take a more hands-on approach with your credit cards and are able to maximize different credits, then you should probably go with the Amex Platinum. And then if you're after simplicity and you want a more straightforward, lower premium card option, then you should probably go with the Capital One Venture X. I could see the argument for having two premium cards in terms of one broader premium card and then one more niche premium card. So like pairing the Amex Platinum with the Hilton Aspire or Delta Reserve. But even then, there's a lot of crossover with those benefits as well in terms of Hilton Elite status with the Aspire and the MX Platinum, or a crossover in lounge access with the Platinum and Delta Reserve. But in conclusion, premium credit cards can be really valuable and they do have a lot of benefits. But there simply are a lot of problems that you need to consider before you add a premium credit card to your setup. And I hope this video was able to help you understand the full picture and some of the mistakes that you should try to avoid. But if you enjoyed this video, then I think you'll enjoy this other video that despite all the changes and everything going on, why the Amex Platinum still destroys the competition. Thank you all so much for watching this video and I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Peace.